Well, good day there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've told you this story before. Uh, back in the late 1980s, I worked at a TV repair shop in Albuquerque. I was a technician. Of course, I had been interested in the abacus since childhood, uh, especially interested in how the abacus was used in other cultures in commerce, right? When I got interested in the nine bead abacus and built this prototype here, I decided that I would maybe use this, try to use this in my day-to-day -day work at the TV shop. And what that involved with in terms of uh, numbers was I would have to draw up an estimate for a repair. It would include the labor, any parts, shop materials. You'd have a subtotal you'd have to add up. And then you had to calculate tax on top of the subtotal to come up with a final total that you call the customer with. So certainly adding up a subtotal of parts and labor and all that was pretty straightforward, pretty easy on an abacus. The tax was a little bit more difficult because it was 5.875% at that time. And so what I generally did at that time is I had a little tax table and a lot of merchants had these back then. This is before everybody had the automated point of sale cash register things that automatically figure out tax. You would just have to look up your subtotal and it would tell you what the tax is. And I was happy with that for a long time. But then a fellow technician started working with me, Dennis Blake. He was going through school getting an EE degree, electrical engineering degree at UNM. So he's a pretty smart guy. And he started getting interested in the abacus and he figured out that we could actually calculate the tax on the abacus itself. Now, normally to do this, you would have to use a multiplication process. And the multiplication process done on the abacus as described in Kojima's books are very similar to the paper and pencil version of multiplication that you do uh, on paper cross multiplying each uh, digit. It's done in a slightly different order in order to make it more efficient on the abacus, but it's the same principle. But in the case of 5.875% tax, that's a four digit multiplication problem. And in the case of some simple subtotal, let's just say an example of $24.95, that's a four digit multiplication times a four digit multiplication. That's 16 operations, right? It's not really time efficient. That's why I never really did the tax calculation the long way. But what Dennis figured out was that the 5.875 can be represented as a fraction of 94 over 16, 94 sixteenths. And then he figured out a shortcut method for doing both of multiplying by 94 and dividing by 16. 5.875, normally a 16 step problem with a four digit subtotal, like $24.95, becomes a lot shorter in practice, as short enough that we could do the calculation on the abacus. And in this case, this particular abacus has 15 rods, so easily done on 15 rod abacus, even with subtotals up in the hundreds of dollars, right? There hasn't been too many people that have uh, used the abacus in commerce in the 20th century, 21st century, in America or other Western countries. So I thought that this was a rather unique opportunity that I had experienced uh, of using the abacus in practice. And by the way, my answers were always really accurate. My boss was initially skeptical, of course, of using this, but soon learned that I was very accurate with it and he was good with it. That was kind of a unique period in my life. And what I wanna do with this video is simply document how I did that calculation. Multiplication in, with the abacus, how does it differ from the paper and pencil version? I'm gonna go quickly over how it's done and then we're gonna go into this shorthand method of doing tax. Multiplication on the abacus is done similar to paper and pencil multiplication except we do it in a different order. So I'm gonna enter the problem 16 times 24. I'm going to enter the 24 here and I'm going to skip two rods and enter the 16 here. So 16 is our multiplier. The paper and pencil version we would 
start from the least significant digit of the multiplier and operate on the least significant digit of the multiplicand. But with the abacus method, we're going to actually start on the most significant digit of the multiplicand. And we will enter the results starting with two rods to the right of the multiplier. So we'll start here. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 4 is 24. We'll clear the 6. Now 1 times 2 is 2, so enter it two spaces to the right. 1 times 4 is 4. Clear the 1, and our product is 384. The shortcut method. Okay, this tax rate calculation is based on the shortcut that 5.875% is 94 sixteenths. And we're going to find two shortcut methods for multiplying by 94 and dividing by 16. And the first shortcut is to multiply by 94. We're actually going to multiply by 100 by mentally moving our decimal point two places to the right and then multiply by 6 and subtract the result from that subtotal, which is equivalent to multiplying by 94. Divide by 16 by simply dividing by 4 twice, and this replaces a two-digit division problem with a two one-digit division steps that can be figured out mentally. Okay, here we go. So the problem calculate 5.875% tax on 24.95. Okay, so we're going to first enter the subtotal 2495. We're going to multiply by 100 by simply moving the decimal point two places to the right in our mind. Now we're going to enter the subtotal again, several columns to the right as a reference point, and we're going to multiply the subtotal by 6. You can enter the 6 to the right as a reminder, but we're going to simply multiply it and subtract that product from the 2495 on the left on the A through D columns. So here we are, nine, 6 times the 9 and the 6 times the 5. So there we go. That is uh, the multiply by 94. And now we're going to divide by 4. We're going to do it in our mind, right? So 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract it. 4 times 8 is 32. We're going to subtract the 32. 4 times 6 is 24. We subtract the 24. 4 times 3 is 12. We subtract the 12. We leave a remainder of 1, and that will end up being 4 times 2.5, which is 10. So that is the first division by 4. The second one, we simply go do it again. 4 times 1 is 4. Remainder of 1, 18. So 4 times 4 is 16. Subtract the 16, a remainder of 2. 4 goes into 26 six times, subtract the 24, remainder of 2. 4 goes to, into the 23 five times, subtract the 20. But we only need two-digit resolution for our answer, so we can stop there. We're going to multiply by 100 to express in dollars and round off to two decimal places. So the result is $1.47. And we have replaced 16 multiplication and 16 addition steps with four multiplications, four subtractions, and two single-digit divisions. Well, this was a fun exercise in revisiting an old abacus problem that was very fun to do back in the time, especially knowing that I was doing actual retail sales kinds of calculations in America. But this is 2019, and of course, the sales tax rate in Albuquerque is no longer 5.875, it is 7.875. Yes, we've gone up a whole two percentage points, and what have we gotten extra for our two percentage points of sales tax in our community? Hmm. But that means also that the shorthand method of doing this calculation back in the late 1980s no longer applies for today because 7.875% is actually the fraction 126 sixteenths instead of 94 sixteenths. If we were going to find out a new shortcut method for doing the current tax rate, well, we know how to do the divide by 16, right? It's still due to single digit divide by fours. What about the 
times 126 part of it. Well, you can multiply by 100 simply by moving the decimal point over two rods, right? Then to multiply by, let's say, 25, you could multiply another times 100 and divide that by four. So you have a single digit division problem and add that product to the subtotal times 100. So that becomes equivalent of multiplying by 125. And then if you add another subtotal to it, that's 126, right? Okay, let's try this new tax rate. We're going to take our example problem 2495 enter it on the left side here. We're going to multiply it by 100 in our mind, so here's the decimal point. Now we're going to enter it again so we can do a little bit of work on it, 2495. This 2495, we're going to divide by 4, and I'm going to start the result here. So 4 goes into 24 six times, 4 goes into 9 twice, that's 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 7 is 28, remainder of 2, which is going to be a 0.5 and we're going to add it to this. So 600 is 20, 10 minus 8, 3, 7, 5, okay? Now we have to add an extra subtotal of 2495, 24, 95. Okay, this number we're going to divide by 4 twice, 4 times 7 is 28, minus 20, minus 8. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 9 is 36. And 4 times 2 is 8 and a 5. So then we'll divide by 4 again. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 9 is 36. 4 times 6 is 24, 4 times 4 is 16. We only need a resolution of two digits. This third digit is less than 5, so we can erase it. So the answer is $1.96. Well, so it's kind of interesting. If you were going to do the shorthand method for the current sales tax in Albuquerque, you would be doing, instead of a four-digit multiplication of your subtotal, you would be doing a single-digit division addition, another addition, and the two uh, single-digit divisions by four. And I think it still turns out to be a lot shorter than trying to do the whole calculation out in one step. Because those shorthand steps are all single-digit operations, it, and once you get adept at that, it becomes quick. This is the thing I noticed when I was doing this back in the late 1980s, is this ended up being quick. The more you did it, the quicker you got at it. For instance, the division by four part, you got to be very adept at that because it was always the same multiplier you were working with, right? The same numbers. If you were to judge this process strictly on the merits of practicality, you might have a hard time justifying why, Joe, would you want to do this in the year 2019 or beyond? Why would you want to do this with an abacus when there are so many other ways that we calculate sales tax, like it automatically shows up on a point of sale device, or you have your calculator on your phone or whatever? Well, there's no arguing about the merits of modern technology in terms of convenience, but I think the argument comes down more to why would you want to do film photography versus digital photography? Well, there's a certain something we get out of those older technologies that you may not get out of the newer technology. In this case, you could argue that these devices themselves are very sustainable. You could carve wooden beads yourself. These are commercially manufactured plastic beads on here, but everything else is pretty much made by hand. It's a sustainable technology, certainly. It's not electronic. It's not based on semiconductors. Yeah, it's a little slower, but in the grand scheme of things, for certain applications, maybe that doesn't really matter. And I think there's another factor that people uh, need to consider is maybe just from a personal standpoint, the idea of using an abacus in the 21st century for calculations like this is just fun. And it also connects you to the past, 
past human history, hundreds, thousands of years ago, humans were making and using the abacus in some form or another for calculations. So there's kind of a historical continuity there that goes all the way back. I know that back when Dennis Blake and I were doing this tax calculation method at the TV shop, that one of the things we noticed was it really did make our minds a little sharper. The more we use the abacus, it, it did something with our cognition running through these problems, and it helped us in other areas of our daily life to be a little sharper. I think there is an advantage to finding uses for the abacus in your life as kind of a mental exercise, especially if you're like me getting older. I know none of you guys out there are getting older, but it's another way to keep your mind sharp. It helps sharpen. It's like exercise for the mind, which I think is another great reason to use the abacus besides the fact that it's fun. Let me know what you think down below. Would you like to try this? Find out what the tax rate is, figure out what fraction of 16 it is, and come up with a shorthand method. Let me know down below. Until next time, as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.